It's dads, lads and kebabs. Hello, welcome to episode 18 of Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Mickey, how are you doing, boy? I'm all good, thank you. No, 18 already, can you believe that? That's like nearly half episode a year, 18. isn't it? It's crazy. Six crazy. months, six months worth of episodes done, <laughs> done. I know, I know. Have we done it so quick? It seems like only yesterday that we started. To be fair, literally probably was. Yeah, it's, it's been a nice journey so far. How's your week but, been? You good? Yeah, back at the gym. Still mm. going to the gym. My right elbow hurts though. My bone, actual bone hurts. I haven't. You got some tennis like, elbow going on. I've got something elbow. I think I got weight elbow. <laughs> No, it's not you're bashing them out too much. <laughs> you're bashing them out too much. Probably, I have been going through that Cecil Hotel uh, documentary on Netflix. Though. That's pretty good. I'm half a the series now. It's good. Yeah. I binged it. I binged a lot of that. Yeah, it's uh, definitely something that I want to finish. Very probably today actually. After we record. So, Get it done. I, I, how you been anyway? All right. Yeah, not too bad. General week, working out, working, same old stuff, different day. A couple of family days out. Went to Alton Towers with a little one. That was good. Yeah. Not been in a while. Um, but yeah, general week, all good. Feeling happy, positive, as I should be. The hair's like growing hair. back a little bit. Look at it. It's a bit of a, a bit of a tough going on at the moment. But yeah, it's going good, man. Go, going good. Yeah. So good. tell us what we've got going on today, then. What we've got going on. Well, this week we have a very special guest. I have met this uh, gentleman personally, and he is a very, very interesting man. And we are going to bring him on now, and we will introduce him. So here we are. We have Ryan Griffiths. Thank you very yo, much, yo, sir. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the show, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's going to be. Um, it's going to be very, very interest, interesting, no doubt. Definitely, mate. Anything it's always with a good Mickey show. Involved, of course, is. Um, Always a bit wacky and zany. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. a bit. He's a bit of a nut job, isn't he? He's just a tab, just a little bit. <laughs> so, how have you been? How has uh, lockdown treated you? Much the same as anybody else. It's been absolutely weird, different, very surreal, almost. Um, because obviously, different situations that everyone's having to sort of live with and. Even now, currently carrying on with. Um, but I've been working. I've been going yeah. to the gym, much the same as you guys. Um, training for the marathon, as we, as you know about, Mickey. Um, yeah. yeah, so I've just been trying to, like, like Neil was saying there, Niall, sorry, he was saying there that, um, about keeping positive and just trying to get through it, just like everybody else. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a I think that's all you can do. Yeah, it's just look for the look for the positive outcomes of life, can't you? You can't dwell on everything that has been going on. It's just been a it's been a I weird roller coaster. Everyone, I haven't been beating one off like Mickey has. Like, you know what I, mean? yeah. <laughs> I think I think I think Mickey's in the lead on that one. He's definitely a, he's did, definitely I doing his own little that. marathon. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> oh, he's doing his own training. Only That's on my elbow hurts. <laughs> As long as long as you're not skiing, as long as you're not skiing, that's amazing. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice skiing. <laughs> Only the gym. <laughs> yeah, that's what you keep telling yourself, mate. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh wow. So Ryan, we've known each other for a few years now. Been on yeah, a few yeah. ghost hunts. You are. What's your official? T is it a spiritual medium? Is that what you would call yourself? Nah. That's no. Not um, I, I would just call myself me. Um, I'm not being pretentious or anything like that, but I yeah. hate labels. Like I, I can't stand okay. being. I, yes, I am a psychic medium. It's what I do. I, I've been around the spiritualist churches for years. Um, mm. I've done all the ghost hunts, like you know, um, uh, and hauntings and all the different things that I've done with Lee. Um, yeah. But through everything, I've always been myself, um, and that either keeps people smiling. Or upset some people, but that's just the way it is. The um, sure. the ghost world is a bit um, it's a bit of a bitchy world, isn't it? Oof, not half. In fact, a bit is an understatement. Um, Mickey's got many stories himself, I'm sure, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's just people just. I think take it. I'm say nothing. I say nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it easy to piss somebody off in that world? Then is it easy to get on someone's back? It's easy and hilarious at the same time. Um, it's fun, yeah. Oh, it's hilarious, mate, because at the end of the day, you just go out there, you do your own thing, you do it your own way, you put your own spin on it. 
um, and guaranteed, no matter what you do or how how much you think about what it is that you're doing, you will piss somebody off. Um, you just let them go, on, mate. Yeah, if everyone hates people's success, don't they? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, you go to a say a famous location, you take a picture outside of it, put it on social media, and you'll get hate. Oh, what the yep. fuck are you doing there? It's like really. I'm here to, you know, like try and investigate, and you're just giving me shit. But that's what that's what you do when you go through it all. Like as you go through your career and go something, if if you want to call it a career or what have you, um, yeah. then you'll notice the people that will stick by you through everything that you've done, um, and yeah. who will support you and give you the right push in the right direction. Um, anybody else, it's not worth thinking about. You might as well just crack on because it's like when you go. I always refer to it like going to the pub. You always get that one mouthy guy at the end of the bar that's always annoying the shit out of you. Excuse Every my time. Every you know time. I mean? <laughs> you, don't, you don't exactly get up and leave, do you? You just like crack on, do what you want. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And that, that's yeah. it. As long as they aren't bothering you directly, let them crack on. It's basically saying that every circle's got its own dickheads, basically. <laughs> always, always. I'm, I'm glad you said dickheads because I don't know if Mickey knows so much because he saw a lot of me on camera and around public, but I swear like a fucking trooper. Like, I swear to God. Yeah. No, don't worry. That's <laughs> grand. Don't worry about that. So we, like, we like swearing on this show. Yeah, this is a no-hold-back show. We leave politics out of it. That's all we do. That's yeah. it. That's it. It's the best way. Yeah. <laughs> politics so, at the door yeah so ryan i believe you told me a few months ago that you did something i would say very very special very noble of you during this pandemic uh very very you know it touched my heart when you told me what you were doing you, you tried a different job was it yeah Vol um, volunteer and i think the the phrase that would sum up the whole thing would be like talk about the expression of jumping from the fire into the frying pan or whichever way around it goes. Um, yeah. Because I really was out of my depth, but just to sort of go back on myself slightly was, like you said, during the second lockdown hit, the first one I was cooped up in my house just like everyone else. Um, yeah. And what I did during the first lockdown was I would put a rucksack on my back. There's a few videos floating around my social media. Um, and what I did was I'd go out and get messages for old people or families or whoever to save to save loads of people going out at the same time basically and i do several runs throughout the day yeah but while i was doing that i was watching all my friends um going out and working within nursing within the care sector ambulance sector the hospitals and the way that the media was building up and they certainly were putting their lives um at, at risk and this bothered me so when the second lockdown hit I immediately applied to work on an ambulance and start working with um, COVID patients directly. Um, wow. And I worked out of um, Queen's Medical Centre and it was just in Nottingham and it was just continuous. There's a place, a little segment, they would have like wards that they would shut down, obviously, especially for COVID patients. Yeah. Um, and I swear to God, I was in and out of there like um, a Chinese lady with a ping pong ball. Like, I swear to God, I was, I was in a... <laughs> Mate, I swear, I was in and out. And this is the thing. And what I was seeing on the news was frustrating because guaranteed, of course, we're talking about not bringing politics into it. But obviously they were trying to keep the public as calm as possible, which is the right thing to do, I suppose. But yeah. telling them the truth is obviously the right thing. Um, but I was seeing a lot more activity within the COVID circles, if that makes sense at the hospitals than what I was seeing on the news and I was thinking this can't be right you know um and I, I kept doing that that's basically what I did during um the second lockdown that's something that I would like to do and something mm. that Niall has mentioned in previous episodes that you wanted to mm. be a, you're gonna be a paramedic don't you know yeah that's a I job, think it's, an, job. it's an aim of mine so it's on the bucket list of uh, something I want to do yeah definitely well what I would suggest uh, you is get involved with um a company there's many companies out there um, but get involved with a company that deals with like patient transport and what that does is then you can sort of get in the back of an ambulance or you can drive an ambulance or whatever and you can move patients around and that'll give you a little taste for it and then from there you just sort of build your training and, and different things mm. but it's not easy believe me because no like said, no it doesn't look easy it looks like it looks like a tough world well, and i mean like you said through covid i think 
a lot of people were sheltered of what we were, you know, exposed to. You know, we wasn't mm. told everything, wasn't told the extent of how bad it was. And some people say it's bullshit and some people say it won't. But from what I did see and, you know, the hospitals that, you know, I did see and things like that and the patients I spoke to in my profession, is it was a lot worse than we were told at the start. Mm. Especially, like like you said, start the second one after Christmas this year. Yeah. I mean, it got, it got really bad. It was horrendous. Um mm. For instance, um, there was a couple of hospitals in Lincoln and Boston uh, and places like that that were completely shut down. Um, and, and what I mean by shut down is they were still having patients going in and out, but they were all COVID. The whole hospital was completely full um, wow. to the point that you would go along corridors and you would see nurses crying their eyes out. Um, just not because of the the severity of the patients that were going in and out, but because of the Probably hours. exhausted. Mate, it was, there was once, I did 144 hours in one week and I did um, a 24 hour shift straight, that's no joke. Wow. But that's, I'm not glorifying what I did, I'm just saying no. that this is this is the extent of what the real doctor... How bad it was, the severity of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was insane. Wow, so it's definitely a lot worse than what the news would have us believe then. Yes, 100%. Mm. Yeah. You watch, I'll get some men in black turn up now and assassinate me for saying that. <laughs> Back over yeah. the edge. <laughs> yeah. Just drag out the door. Back of but, the uh, Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly it. I mean, you're going to get that with any sort of nationwide or, or worldwide um, pandemic or situation in it of any kind. You're yeah, going to yeah. get that where they're going to dumb us down a little bit. But um, I'm not going to go into the conspiracy theory side of it, but it was, yeah, it was really, really bad. No, it was. Do you think we've um? Do you think we've seen the last of it? Mm, no, I, I think yeah, what I've either. seen. What I've seen recently, we are definitely one hundred percent, without a shadow of a doubt. I'd put my life on the line to tell you that absolutely, we're going through a third wave. Absolutely, yeah. um, the hospitals are on the rise. Um, I don't know what it's like in the care home sector, to be honest, but. Um, I'll have to ask my my wife's uh, my wife, my sister's wife. Um, because she works in a care environment, but certainly in the hospitals, it's manic. It's, it's certainly building back up again. Yeah, I, I work in care uh, care homes, and we're mm. we're actually pretty pretty good at the moment. We're mm. still got our restrictions in place because care homes haven't had their restrictions uh, yeah. eased at all. They're still in in the process as we're in lockdown. So I think that will last for a couple more months yet. Yeah. So uh, we've been think... pretty pretty safe. I don't think this wave is as bad as what the second wave is. Um, obviously, I can't really comment on the first one because obviously I was I was in the house. I was doing the shop runs and different things like that. Yeah, that yeah. Plane. But from what I can see and what I've heard, uh, the second wave was 110% the worst. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never seen anything like it. It was quite frightening, to be fair. Have you, are you double jabbed? Do you believe in the jab? <laughs> well... I've heard a lot of different things. Um, okay. I, okay. <laughs> I've been jabbed once. Um, a little bit dubious about the second one. Um, yeah. But I don't really know. I'm not intelligent enough or um, clued up enough to, to make that decision or comment properly. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think I was, you know, so I had my first one, you know, booked in free. And it, when... When I first went for the first jab, there wasn't. It was all about getting your slot. So as yeah. soon as I got my slot available, I was like, "Yeah, okay, cool. I got my slot. I'll go and get it." Second of it, you know, the day before I went to get my second shot, they were like, "You know, under thirties don't need to be having the AstraZeneca." That's um, right. I was like, "Great, you know, twenty nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I've got out my shot tomorrow." So then I was like, I googled everything. Everything said, "Look, if you've had your first one, get your second. Yeah. You know, I've got my second and all that, which is fine. Um, touch wood, I've had no symptoms or anything else or any problems or side effects. But, you know, I was a bit dubious to get my second. I don't know why. I don't know why what it was. Like, I've had my first. But coming to the second, I was a bit, I wasn't sure. And I didn't know, I didn't know what my opinion was. And I was, you know, the thing is with vaccines, especially when discussing it with other people, you don't know until you ask somebody what kind of page they're on. You know, some of like, oh, you're an idiot for getting it. And, you know, half of the people, I know so many people are against the vaccine. 
And I'm just like, well, do you know what? I'll just keep my mouth shut. I've had my vaccine. End of story. <laughs> But then the day, you know, nobody's an idiot. They're entitled to their own opinions. Um, if you, it's, for the sake, if you're completely anti-vax and all that, that's fine. You're entitled to your own opinion. And far be it from me, Mickey, or anybody else to, to say that you can't think like that. Um, I do think this whole argument with either side, they need to just relax a little bit. If they want to have their decisions, like I just said, fine, have your opinions, but don't bitch about it to each other. Don't sit there and say... But the, the anti-vaxxers are idiots or the people who have had yeah. them are idiots or sheep or whatever. Let them do their thing. Let everyone's entitled to do what they want. After my first jab, I was really poorly, but mm -hmm. it did it didn't put me off having my second one because I want to go to New York in November and I need oh, my fucking vaccine. You've I been on about that for ages. I oh, know it's been cancelled three times. Oh god. Yeah, I need to go. Well, you see, so... uh, did you notice, or, well, certainly you're talking about AstraZeneca and things. When I went to get yeah. mine, it was all AstraZeneca, or oh, you're definitely having it, all that nonsense. Yeah. Then I get a text message the day before saying, um, oh, you can't have that anymore. You've now got to have the Pfizer one. Um, and everyone at work, I was the last one, last one to get my first jab. So they were like, come on, Ryan, you've got to go get it. And I was like, mm, I'm a little bit unsure about it. And every time I went to go get it, something fucked up where I couldn't get it um, wow. and it, it just kept going like that, even the second day that I got from my uh, from my Pfizer one got cancelled I was like, what's going off there, like you know it was not until the third time that I went and I actually got my, my jab done Sorry, Was it fi Pfizer in the end? Did you finally Pfizer, get the Pfizer? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, so we didn't go to AstraZeneca to Pfizer twice and then AstraZeneca again at the last minute, no? No, 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 but I wouldn't have been surprised if it did. <laughs> Cocktail of different vaccines. There was talk about that, though, once upon a time, weren't there? There was talking about what, what the difference would be if you mix the different vaccines together. Would it have more of an effect? Of an effect? I mean... Sorry, me and Mickey being in an older age group, you know what I mean? It's just... Yeah, 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 yeah. You young people, Niall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It is. <laughs> Cheers for that, Ryan. Thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's old folk. Okay, That's now. it, mate. That's <laughs> greybeards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not dying it anymore. I'm keeping it with a bit of blonde and the whoa, grey whoa, and the white. Whoa, whoa. What do you mean you're not dying it anymore? I, he was yeah, he's been dying I, it for years. Oh. Yeah, I have, mate. Because it goes white and blonde and, and ginger. Where am I, where's the ginger coming from? Yeah, That's I just, get it. I get the ginger on the top and coming down the sides, but I can't even yeah. grow a proper beard. What's going on? Nor, nor can I. I can't do the sides. Yeah. yeah. I just thought you didn't. I didn't know you couldn't do the sides. You can't. No, I'd have, I'd have the big beard if I could. Do you I not like think the... that Mickey's Mickey's bloody goatee there has to have its own postcode? Like, you know, it's, it's like just fucking huge. Yeah, He's had different styles. It, uh, you've had mm. different styles of it, haven't you? Yeah, I've had the I'm... little thin, thin Craig David beard. Oh god! And initially, oh, when well, they used to cut the top of my under my nose off, so it's very thin, and the little line, and then nothing here. There to be fair, I remember when you had a when you had a mop top, when you had a full on mop hair <laughs> on the top. And yeah, that was <laughs> funny. And you you did it for ages, didn't you? Before you cut, before you had it cut for a charity, it was a yeah, mess. Yeah. yeah, I have really long hair. I remember you doing six, that. Yeah, six seven inches. Yeah, brave the shave. Brave the shave. Yeah. Been bald ever since. <laughs> Still there now. Wow. Well, I was <laughs> shy. It's like um, yeah, it doesn't stick me. I look like Phil Mitchell or something, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, he knows what I'm talking about because he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did actually shave it yesterday because it was the longest it's been since hmm. like the two years since I've had it shaved. It was about this long. Like Are you like full on big shaving it now? It looks that way, doesn't it? Yeah. No, no, it's not skin. It's just a uh, bare blade. So I don't want to go like skin bald. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> is, your, is, is your hands you... hairy? Is my what? Is your hands hairy? Hairy hands, man. Ugh. No? No, not really. <laughs> Why, is that a sign? <laughs> <of something? laughs> is that a sign? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's hairy. No, it's not really. <laughs> my toes are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good anyway. See you later, lads. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Let's go back to little Ryan. Where did you grow up, Ryan? Obviously, you've got an accent. I Where do. are you well from? Well spotted. Sir? Yeah. Well, so yeah, he's not as not as um. I was going to say daft. That's not the right word to say. But yeah, he's not as daft as he looks. <laughs> um. So I was uh, originally from the Shetland Isles in the middle of the North Sea, but my accent um is a lot softer and is more central Scotland because I lived in Glasgow for a long, long time. Um, we lived in East End of Glasgow, in Easter House, and during the eighties, and it was quite a violent and quite a horrendous place to live at the time in fact it was um europe's knife capital at the time for maybe 20 odd years it was there was a lot of gang warfare and, and gang fighting wow. and different things um so i seen quite a, a lot of horrendous things when i was a child wow so what sort of age was did you <clears throat> start seeing all this violence and uh obviously not when you were really little probably well, the earliest um, memory that I have was when I was about four or five years old. Um, we lived in this old tenement block in, in a place called Burlanock Road, um, which is obviously in a, in a place called Burlanock, um, yeah. or Barrel, as we used to call it. The famous Berlini Jail was just like a couple of hundred yards from my house. Oh, wow. um, but, yeah, I remember my mum coming into my bedroom in the middle of the night and she climbed into the bed with me. I thought, this is a bit odd. What's going off here? Um, but I could hear this banging on the door and she was terrified because someone was banging on the door quite violently. So eventually she got up to go and open the door and there was this guy bleeding to death. Um, he had a knife stuck in his stomach um, oh, just wow. sitting on our doorstep. Um, so obviously I saw that, but then my mum sort of moved me out the way and dealt with the situation, called the police and ambulance and different things. Yeah. Um, I remember going into the living room where she locked us in while she dealt with it. And I looked out the window, and you could just see hundreds of people. Or what looked, it was probably, as a kid, it was probably only about 20 or 30 people, but it looked like hundreds of people all smashing bottles and knifing each other. I mean, it was crazy. It, it was like something out of gangs in New York, like you talked about New York earlier. Yeah. It genuinely was the most frightening thing I've ever seen. And you were four, did you say? I was about four, give or take about four or five years old, yeah. What are we talking? Are we talking eighties or like nine? Yeah, eighties. No, this was this was in the early eighties. This was a probably, early 80s. yeah, but 80, 86 or something like that, eighty seven. Mm. Um, oh. yeah, it was quite quite bad. I mean, what? anybody that wants to do a bit of googling can check out what it was like in in the East End of Glasgow during the late eighties. It was not a nice wow. place to be. Wow, I've just realised I'm older than you. Sorry, carry on. Oh, is that right? Is that right? Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gandalf. You may not pass. <laughs> wow. So, how, how long were you in? Did you live in Scotland for? Is it was it a lot of your teens, uh, adulthood, or? When? Yeah. Well, it was a bits and pieces. It sort of went backwards yeah. and forwards because I lived in that same place until I was about ten years old. Um, because I started developing what child psychologists called at the time as ADHD, but um, whether they would have put me on the spectrum or not back then, who knows. Um, but I started misbehaving at school. I would have been quite violent to other kids. Um, oh, wow. I, I was just a little asshole, basically. Like I was, I was a product of my environment, is what I like to say. Um, mm. So, I mean, I remember once I was on the swings at school, and this little kid wanted a go of it, and I wasn't going to let him. So as I swung, I kicked him in the face. Like you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of that. But that's, that's just the type of type of person yeah. that I was, you know. And a lot of people, and you know yourself, Mickey, when what we do with filming and and different, co I'm not asked if I never get another contract. Well, at least I've always been me. Um, yeah. Uh, and this is my story, so to speak. Mm, but yeah, I, was, I lived there till I was about ten years old, and then. My mother, because she was quite seriously epileptic um, and she would have fits all the time, she sent me off to back up to the Shetland Isles to live with my grandfather. Um, and I spent about, maybe till I was about 16, living with him. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, What's that experience. like then, living so remote? What's that like? That's a whole different world, I imagine. Massively. Um, I'm actually due to go back up there 
for about a week. I'm doing a little bit of filming, having a family holiday um, on the 13th of August. So um, you'll probably see bits and pieces on social media, but it is crazily remote. Um, where our house was at the time, it was about 30 miles to the local Tesco's or the co-op or, or things like that. You know, um, There was no fuel. So you, to, if you had, if you lived where I did, you were better off getting your fuel or putting it in cans and different things yeah. and have that at your house. Um, because, yeah, you had, again, about 30 miles to get to the nearest fuel. Um, so it was crazily remote. Jesus. So what, what what do people do for line of work up there then? If you're so remote, what, like, you know, are we talking about fishing, logging? What? Yeah, it's actually, it's several things. During the 70s up in the Shetlands, they built um, probably Europe's biggest, <clears throat> excuse me, Europe's biggest oil terminal, um, which is called Sulem Vo. So a lot of, during the 70s, there was a lot of work with building that oil terminal and putting all the, yeah. the barges in place and different things. And there's still a lot of work there today for that. But predominantly, wow. it's fishing, like you say. It's farming. Although, with the farming, of course, money is not as good as it used to be. No. So it's it's um it's quite bad. So from an early age, I had my fist up a sheep's arse, basically, like you know, or or out on a boat with a fishing rod. Lambing. That's it, mate. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So did you ever Getting work up. on a farm? I did. Yeah. We well, yeah. my uncle, believe it or not, um, he's passed away now. But my uncle. Um, he was a laird so uh, up in Scotland, so he had like hundreds of acres of, of land with loads of different croft houses, which is like farmhouses on it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he would rent them out. Some of them, some of them were um, like uh, what's it what's it called, like long term lets and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I was constantly working on the farm, working with the, the chickens and different things. I wouldn't let Mickey near a chicken, though, judging by his. His track record yeah. with old and all that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Was, oh, that sounds, that weird, sounds like man. heaven to me. But like that it, remote it living, that would be perfect. It is, but I, I urge you to go and check out Shetland in, in the winter weather because believe you me, that, that will blow your mind. Um, you couldn't see the road. The snow would come down. We'd have like 13 foot snow drifts. You'd get snowed in for weeks. Um, helicopters at one point was on national news when it showed you the local Coast Guard helicopter picking sheep up out the field. Like, I swear to God, it was weird. It was like, what do you call those grab it things? Like, that go yeah, along machines. With... Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah good grab machine. <laughs> Fuck it, I won top prize. I've got a female you. <laughs> <laughs> Get your wellies out. <laughs> Happy Get... days. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome to me. It, it, it is, and I'm really excited to, to go back up. There is a massive emotional attachment to me going back up and stuff like that. Um, mm. Due to losing my granny a couple of years back, that was quite horrendous. Um, so we're going to yeah. go up and, and visit the site and put a memorial bench up and, and different things like that. So, um, But at the same time, I have a family holiday. Yeah, yeah. the last time was I it? saw... Sorry, oh. Niall. I'm no, go ahead, mate. My, you, you my go turn. ahead, mate. Yeah. Go on, get off. So, fuck off. Yeah, so uh, the, la the last time I saw you, Ryan, was when we went up for your, was it a memorial ghost hunt to your, your nan you just mentioned, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Was that, that was, a, lots of great people turned up. Um, it, it was how, insane. How, how, how did you feel on the night, if you don't mind me asking? Like, obviously, like I said, a memorial to your nan, what a great person she was. And was that... Was that emotional for you? Did you feel it, happy that we were like respecting her that way? Sure. I think that um, the whole event as a whole was a fantastic thing to see so many people coming together. Mm. Um, and with no disrespect to anybody that turned up, including yourselves, is um, I was shocked. Um, like we were just saying at the, at the top end of the show, there, we were sort of saying about the negativity and different things. And I was shocked to see so many people wanting to put their input in. Jen put a lot of um, prizes in for the raffle. You guys turned up and made donations. There was loads of different things going off and I was blown away by it. Um, I think if I remember rightly, it was 400 pound that we, we raised that night. So you, you can't argue with that. That's that's awesome and has gone towards her headstone, which we will be putting up while we're up in Shetland in a week's time. Um, oh, wow. So we obviously you have to wait with graves without going into the gory details. You have to wait 
I think it's just over a year before you can put a headstone up. Oh, um, is it? Yeah, so you can't you can't put up because obviously the ground sinks, doesn't it? So it's like if you dug a hole in your garden, refilled it in, it would drop slightly, wouldn't it? So oh, um, they yeah, have to let no. the ground settle before you can put the headstone in. Otherwise, you'll end up with like, this weird leaning. Is that why they always have like wooden crosses with just a little name on for yeah. the, the initial initial period? Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, some wow. some people put the crosses up because they want uh they want something up immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. But most graves, you'll go into a graveyard and you might think, oh, this is quite empty. But you'd be surprised how many people are actually buried. It's just that they don't have anything on their graves. Um, and a lot of people say that, oh, that's a shame having an unmarked grave. But they don't realise that the families are usually waiting to the right time to put the headstone up. Um, mm. But in some cases, they put the crosses up, like you say. It's not cheap either, is it? I mean, a full burial this day and age. What is a full burial price? All the plot and everything else, you... I mean... Yeah, thousands for, for a cheap for a, what they well they say cheap, but for a, a basic you know you'd be looking at somewhere between three and five thousand pound. It, it's, wow. it's not it's not cheap. Um, but yeah, that's that's what they call a cheap one, and that's where you will get the bog standard. You just get a standard coffin, you'll get standard tassels and all that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was, a, it was yes. an awesome awesome evening. Yeah, it's an honour to be actually to go up there, and obviously I know you anyway, and uh, what a great guy you are, and just to respect your nan and the, the great occasion it was. It was so nice to be a part of that, and I was really She's glad just, to be involved. You guys were amazing, and as I say, you see, you got a Nick, Jesus Nick. Um, he Nick's a character, Nick. Oh my God! You know, I've yeah, met, he... met Nick several times, and um, he never ceases He's to be amazing. No, he's infectious, isn't he? The the moment you're with him, your 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 mood can just change and big time, you know, big time. And that's that, what he did for me. You know, he, he lifted me up as you did, Mickey, as well. You know, you guys were awesome, and everybody didn't. What I, what I was glad about that event, nobody sort of came and was being really morbid or really heavy or anything like that. They were just really supportive and had a. It was like a normal. Although everyone was putting their hearts were in the right place and everyone did the right thing, mm. it was like a normal ghost hunt. Nobody, you know, people were just decent. Yeah. And that, that was yeah. good. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a great night. So, glad we could have been there. Yeah, appreciate it, man. So, you've been a busy boy over the years. Oh, definitely. Um, just before we carry on, you're talking about when you grew up in Edinburgh. Not Edinburgh, in Scotland, sorry. Yeah. Glasgow. Have you ever... Glasgow, yeah, Shetland Isles and all that. Have you ever been ghost hunting in Edinburgh? Yes, I've been to uh, um, the Edinburgh vaults. Um, yeah. oh, what was the name? Which one was it? It wasn't Mary King's Close, it was the other one. Oh, I forget what it's called now. Do you know the one I mean? It's um, There's a nightclub above it. Oh, oh it's, it's got, no, Excalibur, is it? No, that's in I Liverpool. forget. Manchester, I don't know. There's a few, um, anyway, I, I went to yeah. the vaults and uh, was, I was a bit disappointed that um, the music would play until like two o'clock in the morning, so you only really got a couple hours of um, complete silence. Um, but I'll tell you yeah. a funny story about that. This guy meets you when you get to the site, yeah. and he does like a walk around, kind of like what Lee does at the village and different things like that. Yeah. And we're, we're going at this, like, this cavern, let's call it a cavern, we're going in there and He's talking about rapes and murders and different things like that, that that's happened there. And all of a sudden, the only light that we had was his torch. He says, you won't need your torches, he says, because my torch is like really bright. And it was. It almost lit up the whole room. I thought, this is awesome. Yeah. So he's walking around like that, giving it loudly, talking about this, talking about that, talking about all these weird people and stuff. And all of a sudden, he just switches the torch out. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm sitting there, I'm like proper panic, and I'm like, whoa. Because <laughs> anyone, that, what, what you don't know is I, I am genuinely terrified of the dark. Even as a ghost hunter and as a medium, I'm, I'm terrified of the dark. Um, so I said, get the fucking torch on, get the fucking torch on. <laughs> he, switches, mate, he switches the fucking torch on, and he's right in my face. <sighs> I swear to God, I, I swung at him like this. <laughs> <laughs> how that guy how that guy stepped back at the way in time I'll never know I mean even Muhammad Ali couldn't have moved that quick but he moved and I just swung at him and he's gone whoa 
And I said, mate, don't ever fucking do that to me again. I swear to God. He, he probably does that on every tour. He's used to mm. it. <laughs> that's, probably, yeah, that's probably his party trick for the tour. That's probably it. Oh, fucking hell. Um, but I actually went to Mary King's Close when I was a, when I lived in Glasgow during that gang, that gang sort of era, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, my mum and her boyfriend at the time took us up to Edinburgh just for a day trip out. I went into Mary King's Close again. I was only, I was about seven or eight, <coughs> and as we were going down and around and different things, I became quite ill. Um, in fact, I became seriously ill. By the time I got home, I was two weeks in my bed. Um, I developed pneumonia. Yet it was in the height of summer. Wow. Um, and I was serious. I mean, I was throwing up. I was hallucinating. Um, lots of different things and the doc I can't even remember what the doctors were injecting me with I was that bad um, but I, I'm thoroughly convinced that what I seen because I kept seeing this horrible looking man follow me around that I was convinced was part of like the tour and, and different things like that um, but as soon as I started feeling ill he disappeared and yeah. peop- the doctors and my mother and, and, and people like that used to tell me that it was just my hallucinations because I was ill, um, and and it, nobody wanted to believe me, you know. Yeah. So I, I've never been back there since. I don't blame you. Save a price yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Name the price. Yeah. So how talking about your your ghost stuff? How from what age did you develop the uh, the mediumship side mm. of your abilities? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, I've I seen throughout my whole life, even during everything that I've spoke about so far, I've seen spirits, I've seen ghosts, I've seen different things. Um, I've seen women, like ghost women walking past windows, I've seen um, doors opening and shutting, things move. Um, but always, any time I went to an adult to explain what I was seeing or what I was going through, um, no one wanted to believe me, or they didn't want to talk about it, shall I say. Um when I was about, when I, when I said that when I went up to the Shetlands to live with my granddad at the age of 10, yeah. um, and I already said that I'm frightened of the dark, so I always had the bedroom light off, but the hallway light on and the door open. It's just how I, how I slept. And my room was like an L shape. Um, so one night I wake up and I get this horrible feeling that somebody is in my doorway, as bizarre as that is. So I, I crawled to the end of my bed, looked round the wall, and sure enough, standing in the middle of the doorway was this little girl. And I always describe her. Yeah, I, I always describe, mate, mate, it gets, wait to hear this. I swear to God, this is gospel truth. Um, I see this little girl and she's like, um, I, I describe her like the girl out of Interview with a Vampire. You know, she's got the, the, the locks and, and the, the dress and all that and the nice shoes and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, hmm, fuck that, under the duvet. You know, to do, and off I went to sleep. So, but what I didn't tell you there was while she was, while I was looking at her, she was looking at me and just smiling and nodding her head, like you know. I thought, my oh, baby. you're fucking lucky. I don't throw my shoe at you, bitch. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm oh, there. Nah. I'm like, uh, I'm there. I put the duvet over my head. I go to sleep. I wake up in the morning. I go downstairs dead excited. Granddad, granddad, he's like, what, what? I said, look, and I told him what had happened. And immediately he just shut me down. He was like, well, don't want to talk about it. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Several years Sorry. went past. I'm now at my grandmother's house. They'd separated years and years and years at that point. Um, so I'm with my grandmother and we're just talking about ghost stories. And I bring this particular story up. Yeah. She starts crying well, after I describe her. I said that this little girl looked at about four years old. Um, Because she asked me what age. I said about four years old. She starts crying and leaves the room. She comes back in with two photo albums. She gives me the first photo album and she says, is that her? I said, yeah, but it's not how she looked. So she's still crying. She she gave me the second one. She says, is is that her? I said, that's exactly it. How the, The picture that she showed me was exact same as I had described. As it turned out, it was her first child who had passed away when she was four years old. Get this, of pneumonia. Um, And 
I never met her because obviously she would have been my first auntie, which was long before I was even born. Um, so sure. that would be the first message because although there was nothing said, she was nodding her head. What my granny then said to me was, I've always wondered, I've always wondered if she's okay. So wow. what was she doing? She was smiling. She was nodding. There's your message. That was all that needed said. Yeah, I'm um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was when I first sort of knew that different things were starting to happen, but it wouldn't be until like my late teens where I'd go to see a medium and I'd get seven messages in the same night, invited to um, that medium's house to sort of yeah. learn to sit and meditate and, and develop my own skills. Wow. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Just to 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 see, like you say, your aunt from mm. what would have been your aunt for the future. That is that's crazy. And I suppose Mental. you can't really you can't really knock that, can you? You can't say, Oh, that's not real because you'd never seen her. There's no and, chance. No, and the only way you'd have known about it is if seeing the photos from your <laughs> granny. But what's interesting is how as I say, how I described it is how my granny herself yeah. had prepared her for her, her funeral because the picture that she showed me she was oh, inside wow. a coffin this was this is in london this is what they did because yeah. my gra my granddad um was from london he was from a place called tooting in the east end again the east end coming in um <laughs> but my granny was an au pair so one night she was leaving a cinema she was getting a bit of bit of shit from some young lads and my granddad stepped in and walked her home and, yeah. and the rest is history. You probably smashed in the back alley somewhere. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 oh, fuck it up. Well, Hello, man. But, but, That's how it works. That's how the best nights out. <laughs> let's, let's not fucking bullshit just because it's our grandparents. We did the same thing. It is what it is. It's just, you know what I mean? So he walked yeah. her home. The rest is history. And um, they had a child while, while she was there. And that was the child that they had. It was then swept under the carpet because death and the kids and different things like that back then, they sort of just we didn't really talk about it. Yeah. Um, but taking the pictures of the dead, which I didn't know at the time, is still an ongoing, ongoing tradition during the East End of London. Oh, wow. So I, I didn't know that until, until that then. Yeah, yeah. So this, this four-year-old girl, would mm. that have been your dad or your mum's sister? No, no, not uh, sorry. That would be my mum's sister. Your mum's yeah, sister. I follow yeah. what you're yeah. saying now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Did she not mention it at all then when she? Nobody, was... nobody had, no. had said anything about it ever. Um, no. Even now, it's never really spoken about. It's yeah. every now and again it'll come up, but usually because I'm telling this story or what 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 happened to me. Um, but yeah, it's it's not really spoke about. Even my children that I've lost, it's not. We don't really. Not for any reason, it's just not something that we, I don't know, we just don't talk, talk about, about it. No. Yeah. It's a strange one. Wow, that, that story's yeah, blowing me away. Yeah, that's definitely, um, even just the doorway thing, that would, for me, I'd be, I'd be out of there. <laughs> but yeah. do you know what? Speaking about that is, I have the, I have the same recurring woman in my dream all the time. Not, not every day, not every month. Yeah. But it's always an old, yeah, yeah, it's not like that. It's not <laughs> like more. that. I always have this, and it's always been since I was a kid. It's an old woman, and do you know, like those long white nightgowns, proper white hair, and literally, I just always see her standing at the, the, at the end of the bed and since I was a kid. And that for me, like, with, that was the nightmare I had as a kid, like, uh, once a week. Do you recognize never, no, no, I can, I can, I can picture her face. I can picture everything. She's tall, really tall, really slim, but just stands there, and it's always there. And I'm just like, I never acknowledge it. Like certain people, I like your your world of what you guys get into. For me, I'm a million miles away from it, just because I, I think the fear of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't fear death or anything like that, but the fear of the unknown of the, for somebody wanting to contact you or talk to you or even just scare the shit out of you. Like, it, honestly, it, it puts the shits at me big time. I'm that's, literally that's like, 
even even for us, when we do it, we kind of with a Mickey. I um, I'm sure he would admit it, but uh, we when we chase that. So so like when when we get that fear, when we go into a location, when we go and we see it, a haunted location or whatever, we chase that that sort of buzz, that fear. You might see us excited, but believe you me, we're shitting ourselves because even if something happened. Um, we're just going to get as frightened as anybody else. It just means that we're stupid enough to stay there and try and get some more evidence. Like, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. definitely we definitely run to that. That is what that's what we're there for. That is mm. our holy grail to make contact. And no matter how scared we are, that is it's the, like I say, it's the adrenaline, it's the buzz. When when you get that communication back, your whole body is like whew, enlightened it's like you get the buzz the charge and it's 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 a it's a weird feeling to describe unless you've experienced it yeah yeah well i've asked mickey this question um well, ryan have you, have you ever been to a location where you've just think nope too far i ain't doing once, this once but i still did it um that was jedburgh castle jail in the scottish borders it was um absolutely insane I might send Mickey a piece of footage later on and he can have a look at it and make his own mind up. Um, I thoroughly suggest you get yourself there, Mickey, whenever you can. Um, yeah. I've got contact details, all that. But anyway, it was it was horrendous. It was cell doors, like these massive doors that are like six foot odd high. They're like fucking six inches thick. Just slamming like this, I swear to God. Um, but this was like, I've never been back for about, ten, for about 10 years or something like that. But I walked onto this cell block and as I was walking along, the guy that was filming me was at the end. So he didn't walk in. He just sort of filmed me walking down. It was just a bit of promo stuff, a bit of B-tape. And I'm, I'm sort of walking along. And then the door started going doof, 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 doof. And then the next one started slapping. I shit you not, mate. Those four doors were going like that. Bang, 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 bang. I ran right past them down the fucking stairs. <laughs> I was like, I'll, I'll fuck it. I'm not going back up there again. No chance. But I did. Later wow. on that night, I went back up and I, I did this bit of physical mediumship. Again, I granted from a sceptical mind it's open to interpretation, it's open to criticism. and I get that. I accept it. Watch the video. Mickey knows me. If he watches that video, he will know. He will just trust me. He'll know. Um, I, I imagine I prisons are really active places, though. They're not. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm talking the older prisons that are not in use anymore. They were not yeah. nice places. They're not holiday camps like they are now. Definitely you know, not. They, you know, they were quite, you know, brutal places back then. I, mean, I imagine if you found yourself back in a jail in like the 50s, 60s and upwards or whatever, oh, I imagine people were dying left, right and centre and there was probably never any, any documentation ever about it. Well, imagine, one, yeah. of the, one of the cells up there, they're, they're standard cells, they're only like, I don't know what it is, it five by eight or four by eight, whatever it is, they're only little cells and they used to hold 20 odd people in the same in the same cell. I shit you not, mate. This, uh, this place is, and what they used to do is all the prisoners, they'd take them one by one and hang them. So like, <laughs> it just, just hang them. Fuck it. Why, hang why them. Not? Fuck yeah. Overcrowding, yeah. Imagine, yeah. Overcrowding, like, get rid of, you know, get rid of 20 today. That, that's exactly what they used to do. And then some would, like, the bigger profile prisoners, like, um, I don't know, like, who was around at that time, but, yeah, I suppose your Dick Turpins and people like that, chuck them up to, like, Edinburgh, and they'd go on horseback and quite often would escape and, and what have you. But that that's the sort of time frame that we're sort of talking, that sort yeah. of era. So, yeah, they used to just hang them and they'd hang them on site as well so there's there's loads of stuff goes on there wow. well there was um there was a thing weren't there back in there especially in scotland like bodies were used for science i mean i remember burke and Hare. people yeah. were selling people were selling bodies back in the day for money for well, science and stuff mention, obviously... um, that, that's it but it's funny you should mention burke and Hare because they were actually um i can't remember if it was both of them or one of them that was kept there uh, at jedba castle jail um mm. So yeah, you need to you need to check that one out, Mickey, and it's, it's fairly reasonable cost wise and stuff like that. Oh, I, I have tried to go there a few times, but for mm. whatever reason, it hasn't happened. Yeah, because you yeah. probably need me, mate. That's probably what it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. Next time you go, let me know. Yeah, man. <laughs> Put me in a cell. Bang, bang, oh. bang, bang. <laughs> You'll love it, mate. You'll love it. Fuck, Fuck that. You know. yeah, send Nile up. 
I was just about to say, I think you should come and do a lone vigil. I'd, I'd, don't get me wrong, I'd do it. I'd, I've definitely got some stones, I'd give it a go. But do you know what I mean? The, I think it'll be the after effect with me. After a few, I'd yeah. be I'd be gone for weeks. They'll be like, no one's no one's heard of Niall for weeks. <laughs> he's, che- he's checked himself in somewhere. <laughs> it's rocking in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dribbling. <laughs> because for me, yeah, that, like I said, I don't fear very much. Like, But the things that I do fear are what's not known. You know, mm. I don't. And for that, for me, standing there in the dark or, like, I'm not scared of the dark, but I always think there's something there, you know. Yeah. I still run up the stairs now because I think someone's fucking behind me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know here's what the mean? thing, I... Is that just the mind or is there actually somebody behind you? Oh, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> hey, I'm fucking serious. I'm not, Don't I'm look not back. It's always been. I've always had that feeling, though. Always had that feeling. Yeah, I don't like being. You know, like what what you're actually saying. You're talking about that lady who comes to the the end of your bed and different things. Yeah, you're talking about going up and down the stairs. You're already painting a bloody picture that some fucking ghost is trying to terrorise you. I get (laughs) appreciated. To be honest, we used to um when I in an old house that I lived in, we had a cellar and um. We used to have to put the electric on by a key. Yeah. Uh, down in the cellar was obviously the box where there you put the key in. Yeah, that's what Get I out, need. demon. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we used to have to put the key in for the electric. And obviously, if, if you run out, like, you'd get emergency credit there. You could press the button. And I remember I sometimes it, it'd run out in the night and I'd just be like, nope, I ain't switching that back on tonight. <laughs> I ain't going down there in the night. Yeah, see, I often say to people without going into it, because it's a massive subject you can talk about for hours, but I always say to people, those are the feelings, those are the sensations, those are the thought processes that I tell people to pay attention to when they're on a public ghost hunt, because there's a reason for you feeling that. You're not just feeling that out of paranoia. You know, there's usually, nine times out of ten, I would say that a spirit or an energy or something moving around you, and it's not always bad, it just sometimes to you, because you don't know what it is, can be mm, quite that's frightening. That's it, yeah. Um, but it could be your mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle. It could be anyone in spirit that's just coming around you, but scaring mm. the shit out of you at the same time. So, Ryan, do you believe, you know when you go on Ghost Sense and they say, oh, mm. most most of the spirits that are here today have actually came with you. It's, they're not in this building, they're with you. Do you, do you believe that to be the case or do you think they are residing in a location spirits energy um will reside in a location and different things like that however um i like to believe and it's only my opinion that um spirit can move around wherever they like mm. however when you talk about what really annoys me is when you go on a ghost hunt a public ghost hunt <coughs> excuse me um you, you start talking about the mothers coming through and the, the fathers coming through. and oh, Yeah, but why? Because I know that sounds bizarre. You'll get little snippets of loved ones coming through. I, I don't doubt that. But take, for instance, you go to Jedburgh Castle Jail. I can assure you my mother would not want to come through there. Um, <laughs> and if she did, she'd probably kick the shit at all of the spirits. But that's, that's the thing. <laughs> That's, yeah, I know what you mean. I just, yeah. If if you if you try, I, maybe I'm not explaining myself, but that's the sort of way I'm thinking. I'm thinking, mm, yeah, we're not. Coming, Why are they coming through that place? Yeah, yeah. But then, surely it could be a, a bit of a warning for you, though. You know what I mean? If you're in a place where you shouldn't be, maybe yeah. that person is coming through that place and saying, "Look, you know, you shouldn't be here." Yeah, I give you that, but mm. it's when it, when I'm talking when I'm talking about they come in on the boards or, or the mediums and. Yeah. And all the medium's doing is walking around talking about, oh, yeah, I've got your brother here and he's just saying hello. He just wants to come. Why is your brother fucking saying hello? You know what I mean? Tell me to fuck off. I want to talk to Jack the Ripper. Do you know what I mean? What, what's going off here? Give me something, give me something interesting. <laughs> hey, I kid you not. This is, this is how I want. I always say to people, um, from a non-egotistical way, I always say I'm the, like, the people's medium because... I've been on from the street, if you like, not living on the street, but I'm from yeah. the street, if you like. Um, I'm probably the most common speaking medium you'll ever find. Um, and it, it's done me quite success so far, it, it, being myself. So um, I always say to people, when I work with my spirit team, my guides and different people like that, I always say to them, look, if someone's loved ones comes through while I'm on a ghost hunt or whatever, I say, awesome. I'll give that little bit of information, but fuck off because I want to talk to Jack. <laughs> 
Mr. Ripper over here, <laughs> or or your doll in that that time we went with a doll and, and different things. You know, yeah. I'm Fuck not interested. Dolls. Oh mate, but going uh, that's just that's just I'm not interested. There's a certain different situation for giving private readings or, or linking with people's loved ones. But then, yeah. right, so saying, like, obviously, going back to you, Mickey, right, you um, have obviously bought your dolls from abroad. Like, you know, you've had dolls from America and whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. see them sitting in first, I don't see them sitting in first class on a, on a British Airways flight, making their way over to you. <laughs> like, that for me, that's, that's hard to believe for me because obviously, you know, are they staying with the figure or are they residing at the place where they lived for 40, 50 years? That's over to, to Ryan. Cool. How the spirit travels, how it moves. So yeah. it's dead easy and I can keep this one quite brief. So yes, you can get what's called spirit attachment. Yes, you can get the dolls that could be, if you like, haunted and all these different things. That can all happen. But it's a little bit like switching your TV on. You have to press that button and the picture comes up on screen. So when you press that button and as in you take hold of the, the item and you start working with it, then spirit, no. I can assure you that prior to you doing that, spirit are aware that you're going to be doing that. And I know as bizarre as that sounds. Yeah. Um, so like tomorrow, for instance, if me and Mickey plan to go to a haunted location, they're also planning that haunted location or whatever the case may be. And the same goes with working with a haunted doll so mickey sets that intention in his mind he says right i'm going to work with this haunted doll tomorrow spirit are automatically saying right let's make it ready let's get everything in place let's let's do what we can to make this work um it's not a, a click of the fingers thing they're not going to start performing like monkeys but they'll do absolutely everything that they can to give mickey the success that he needs um so that'll be why the more regular you do it, it's a bit like I know I'm probably waffling, but it's going back to no, no, my no. and, and my, my development. I used to sit every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock on the dot for half an hour. Every night. Uh, sorry, every Tuesday. The reason I did that was because then Spirit, like I've just explained about knowing in advance what you're doing and all these different yeah. things. Can Basically then... your timetable, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that is the same as what I believe works with haunted items. They're maybe not haunted continuously, but when you start mm. working with them, it's like pressing that TV, that button on the TV, like I spoke about the picture coming up on screen. Suddenly they're now ready to work. Um, and, you know, so it's like an active vessel then as such. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah. What keeps you doing what you're doing? I mean, obviously for yourself and Mickey in the world that you're in, like, is there is there ever a day where you just feel like well, I don't feel like doing this shit anymore? Every day, I'll let I'll let Mickey answer that one first. Yeah, it's been a while. I've just been in my house doing all my weird shit. Not really been going out, which I'm disappointed with myself. But yeah. So what what keeps you going though, Mickey? Yeah, what yeah, what keeps you going though? And is there is there ever a time that you just think like, as much as I love what I do. I, I just and not for laziness. I'm talking about through the actual activity itself. Do you ever just feel like I, you know I can't be dealing with this world anymore? From a personal level, I know I have a connection and I'm good at this. So for me, like taking pandemics fucked everything, but hey ho, it's getting back into it. If you know what I mean. It's finding the spark to keep going and go again because there's always the next time. There's always the next location. The next week, I'm gonna go do something. It's maybe hope. I don't know. Hope it will be better. Hope it will get amazing. And I think that's what it is. It's like oh, the next one will be better. So it's always gonna be the next time I do something. For yeah, me, definitely. that's what keeps going. If I don't have that, then obviously I'd stop. Yeah, I'd have to say, uh, second all pretty much what you just said there as well. I think I find that I struggle sometimes to carry on. Um, I know that working as hard as I have been working, it's not just about the hours, but it's more about, do you know what, putting things in perspective. Can I really be asked? Do I really want to get up and run about at four o'clock in the morning in the darkness and the cold and busting for a piss, but you can't go for one because you're filming constantly? Um, of course you do. All that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 
it's is it really and then when you when it comes down to it, I spend hours upon hours editing everything up, making it look nice. You put it out and some fanny comes along and comments <laughs> on it and goes, It's all fake. Yeah, <laughs> fuck off, cunt. Do you know what I mean? It's one of them. It's, it's just like There's yeah, a lot of them. And then it's like you watch people, and I, don't, I really don't care because I said this. I got interviewed the other night live on Facebook, and they were all like, oh, "You can't say that. You can just tell in their faces." But it's people like your John Six Senses, your fucking oh, yeah. all these absolute white stains on the paranormal community. I swear to God, <laughs> if the paranormal, if the paranormal field was a bed sheet, I shit you not, they would be the spunk stains from a brothel. Like you know what I mean. <laughs> It's just <laughs> I mean, the best bit. The best bit about it is you've got you've got loads of them, and I'm just I'm just doing, I'm doing it deliberately. Really, <laughs> you've got loads of them. You get your John Six Senses. You've got um, I can't hear. What's that scarecrow crow looking motherfucker that runs around and pisses everybody off? What's his name? Oh, you won't tell me now. <laughs> I know. Um. Oh, what's his fucking name now? I, that's how important he is. Project Ghosts or whatever the fuck they're called. Anyway, him. People don't know who right. that is. I forget his name. Um, and a few others. They just they go out there to piss everybody off on purpose. They go out there to shit stare. Not one of them is interested in ghost hunting like we are. You just said there, Mickey, you're quite good at it. You are. Um, uh, but these people that, that do that, they're just, they're just not wanted. And it's people like that that I see. And I kind of think, can I really be asked? Or do I just go back to what I was doing prior to Facebook Lives and all that and do my own thing and, and get my own evidence and whatever, you know? Yeah, how how you want to do it, whether you want, you're doing it for yourself and just happy if people like what you're doing or mm. you're doing it for the fame, which, like say, that John Sixth Sense, he, he appears to be doing stuff to get attention because yeah. one minute is is normal on the like the lives that I've seen a few, and then other times he's screaming and shouting, and he's being horrible and abusing people, and it's like, yeah, I swear to what? God, I shit you not. If I saw that man in the woods, I don't care. You can, it's, I actually have to be careful here because I don't want to incite a criminal offence. But you know that way, when you, see, you know that way, you know that way when you see somebody's face, just what if? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. You just want to, yeah, you just want to egg him. He's going to throw an egg him. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so, um, finishing, yep. Ryan, um, we're going to finish on your sporting activities. I believe you are quite a sporty person. I'm um, still a fat bastard. <laughs> fat bastard, yeah. And we all. <laughs> um yeah, so football. Football was played a big part of your life, I believe. Yeah, massively. So even as I was growing up, I was a huge Rangers fan. Um, you know, massive, massive Rangers fan. Um, so I never missed a game even growing up. Uh, it, it was just awesome. And any kick of the ball, I just I was out there. I was. I used to have like, a, a, you remember the old Coca Cola balls you used to get? Do you remember the little yeah. ones? Yes. I used to have one of yeah. them. And I used to draw a square on the wall, and every time just do keepy ups headers into this little square yeah. on the wall, and I just do that. And um, I played a little bit of school football. Um, that sort of transpired. Off I went. I got a semi pro career. Um, I played oh, wow. for I played for Air United, Yeovil, um, Bath, and a few other little teams here and there all over the country. Wow. Um, I, then when I was about seventeen or eighteen. I got offered a chance to go and play in Germany in the Bundesliga, believe it or not, with um, Hoffenheim. That okay, was my no. first professional contract. But then, sod's fucking law, the absolute wankers upstairs weren't watching down on me that fucking day. No, they weren't. Instead, it's during the winter training. <coughs> we're we're at the, in the complex there. We're doing a bit of five-a-side and that indoors. Yeah. I'm tying my shoelace, my trainers, like, you know, and the ball... We're just passing it about, warming up, and the ball rolls towards me. The guy behind me shouts for the ball, hey, right, pass it here. So I sort of did this weird twist to kick the ball, and I tore every single ligament in my groin. Um, my legs, my leg was like this big. I swear to God, my leg was as big as my waist. Um, I had to get, like, injections and stuff because I had fluid building oh. up. Um, so I got all that mended. I was told I'd never never play football again. 
Um, but I did. I played a lot of Saturday League and Sunday League and stuff like that, and junior football and stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I did all right for a number of years. I got a bit of money in. Um, yeah, then that sort of fell away. Then I went into running. Um, I, yeah, marathons. I, I, yeah, I now do marathons. I, I ran the the London Marathon virtually last year. Um, yeah. the for, that was the fortieth race, so I got the big forty gold medal. Um, I'm I'm running it again this year with Lee Roberts, who is my partner in crime and everything that I do. Yeah. Um, but while I was growing up, I was quite I was a bit of a sprinter. I wasn't into my long distance. I was even during my football years, I was doing a lot of sprinting. I was a right back. I was the fastest guy in the league. I mean, I was shit hot when it came to running, if I do say so myself. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. I mean, I can't. I can't. I remember. I remember running like um, a Glasgow school sports, and I, and you'll never believe me when I tell you, I ran it in a pair of Doctor Martin boots and still won the race. Um, wow. I, I was insane. They they were on about this. You know, I was going to do really well, but football was my thing. Um, yeah, I actually became the seventh fastest in Scotland and the sixteenth in the UK for the juniors. So I was all right. I was you didn't too bad, was you? Yeah. Fast little so, fucker, eh? I mean, I was insanely quick. Um, I'm not that tall, but I'm I'm quite hefty now. I'm quite big built, but um, yeah, back then I was like a skinny little whippet. Ah, so sorry, just to finish, you did the virtual marathon, did you say? What what does that mean? So, like I was saying during the first lockdown um, earlier on, when I was talking about that. Um, I was doing my shop runs and different things, yeah. and nobody was allowed to really go out. You got everyone watching this, and you guys know what it was like, so yeah. I don't need to talk yeah. about that too much. Um, but they were on about whether the London Marathon was actually going to go ahead due to the vast amount of numbers. So oh, what they yeah. did was they, they they split it off locally, so you could go and run. You had to sign into the app. You all got your numbers and your vests and all that sort yeah. of nonsense. Yeah. And then on the day when you start, you start that app. And it tracks you. You have to cover that mileage, and you could do that mileage either several bits throughout the day. You could run an hour, stop, run an hour, stop. And um, but me and Lee, we ran the whole distance like as if we were in London, and we wow. ran all the way from Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham to Mansfield um, to King's Mill Hospital, um, and that's where we finished. So you'll see a picture on my profile where me and Lee are coming across the finish line. Um, yeah, I've seen that, that. that that was us finishing. Um, we had the BBC f follow us and we were on BBC Knots, we were on the radio. Um, yeah, we did quite well out of that. We did quite well. That's awesome, man. Wow. So that, just, that's why it was virtual, just purely because, obviously, restrictions yeah. and things. That's a good idea, to get everyone involved who still wants to do it. Mm. Uh, yeah. Quick question. What's, yep. Katie Price, what's Katie Price like? She's off a nut. <laughs> I bet awful. she is. Mate, I mate, bet she is. Because you've been on a, a TV show with her, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I can't remember now. Was it last year or the year before? I can't remember. I think I think year before. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I went down there. I did a bit of ghost hunting. Um, she wanted a medium to come and, and clear it, cleanse her house, which I did. And yes, it did have some spirits there and different things, but nothing violent. Um, but while I was there, she was like, she's a proper... I have to watch what I say. Yeah, yeah. She's lovely. Yeah. She's lovely. <laughs> She's amazing. She's just fifty she b what, short of a quid. <laughs> she is. She is exactly what you both are thinking. Yeah. It was. It was quality. It was quality. Ah, oh, it's a great experience. Anyway. Big time. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. So I think that's where we're going to end the show today. We've rolled on a little bit, but obviously, yeah, awesome. Well. It's been awesome a really good show. Of yeah. Ryan. Yeah. And uh, we didn't end on what? death. I, I... No death no, we today. Didn't. We didn't no end death. on death. That's Just usually our thing. <laughs> He's dead. Katie He's Price in her dirty bed sheets. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, God. Seriously, I bet her walls have seen some spunk. <laughs> um, Exclusive. Yeah, so she, she, we were going around the house and stuff like that. And after we finished filming, she did a little video for my, for my missus, like, you know, and invited us down for a barbecue and all that shit. Oh, when you did the cleansing, are you talking about her mucky mansion? Hmm. Yes, that one. Are you talking about that, that shit all of a house? Mate, did I she sell it? Getting... No, oh, she's she still it. She's, still she's trying to do it, up, isn't she? 
Yeah, mm. but um, yeah, when I went there, it was an absolute shithole. Um, they got actually, I had, I had reporters from the Sun, the News of the World, this uh, this morning, um, all that sort of bollocks, um, all fucking trying to get the exclusive on it. But yeah. as you well know, Mickey, um, we can't we can't say anything through contract and shit like that. No, 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 yeah. NDAs and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but that, that other other than that, I was thinking, hmm, a hundred grand. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, if you if you would have just took if you would have just took pictures on your phone, you could have fucking made a killing off that. All right, that's interesting. Oh. That she that. <laughs> yeah, you should you should yeah sell those photos. Yeah, man. <laughs> Mate, I, am, I, I imagine, yeah, her to live like you know with the like dirty thongs on the fucking banister and shit like that. That's how I imagine her to live. One room, I shit you not. I went into this one room and it was just fucking covered. If you if you look at the clip that I put on social media of me and Lee, we're in this room and I'm putting the fucking sage around and stuff like that. Um, if you, <laughs> yeah, Power take the smell away. <laughs> If you have a look in the background, <laughs> you'll see all the fucking piles of clothes and all sorts yeah. of shit. Everywhere. Well, she did, didn't she? She did some. She released some of the stuff from her mansion, didn't she? And about the rooms, like you said, the rooms of clothes and stuff like that, and rooms yeah. of fucking all sorts of shit. But then, like, even her garden, she had like a fucking bike in a swimming pool and just. Yeah, yeah. But the weirdest hell. thing, she said to me, "Oh, come!" When I was giving her a reading and her mum a reading and stuff. Um, I tell you what's interesting is they released the fact that her mum had cancer, right? Um, I think it was about a week or two weeks after I'd been there. But that's because, and mate, you can, there's no footage of it, so I have nothing to back up. And you don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you, I was in that room, and during the, the reading that I gave her mum, I told her mum that she basically had cancer. Um, and she not know? No. She, had, she went to the doctor, she got checked, and... I told her that she needs to go um, and, and things like that. And off she went. And next thing she's got cancer, she's announced it to the public. So that was pretty. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not saying that um, it was me, but I know it was me because I told her. Um, yeah. 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 Wow. But we had, we had fucking the paparazzi up the fucking trees and all sorts. It was, it was crazy. Probably thought you were shooting a porno. <laughs> 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 fuck it up. Oh, oh fucking hell. But that's awesome, so, man. So Ryan, how can people find you on social media? What's your paranormal team? I hope you just edit that bit out there, did you? It's all going, don't worry. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was, I was thinking, oh, don't you, you, you and you'll get a, you'll get a copy of it before it even goes anywhere near being live. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cushy. Um so find me. You don't need to follow me. I'm not asking for loads of people to like and to follow and to do whatever you do. You want to do and follow whoever you want to follow. But if you want to go check out my stuff, find me on my own personal page on Facebook at official Ryan Griffiths. Um, you'll see a picture of me and Katie Price in the profile. That's me. Give me a like and follow if you want. Or you can find me, The Hauntons, on Facebook. So all you need to do is type into Facebook at The Hauntons TV and you'll find me there. Awesome. No problem. And I'm on TikTok as well. Um, oh, uh, yeah. The original paranormal TikTok man. Mate, I, I wish I had talked about that actually. Um, but if you want to follow me on TikTok, you just find me at the Viking 2.0. Um, yeah. Just look for my ugly mug. You'll see me there. Um, that's this one in the streets. <laughs> Mate. Yeah, I, I like them. Good old TikTok. Man. Man. Love TikTok. She says to me, my daughter was doing it and she was only getting a couple of hundred likes. One, This was a couple of years ago now. And she was like, oh, she said, I'm only getting a couple of hundred likes. I might not bother. like you know." And she was she was loving it and she was losing heart with it. So I thought, right, I'll set up an account. Being a genius that I am, I'll set up this account to try and help her. And then I can like all her videos and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this fucking thing. I thought, I'll have a go at that. <laughs> Gave it one of them. <laughs> Got about 50 views. And then it just sort of went on. And then I used to walk across traffic lights on the fucking road and just start going, woo, like this. It went fucking viral, didn't it? Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I got like 700,000 views on it. My latest one got 6.2 million views on it. I was like, what the fuck? 
I need two hundred. Are they? Are they, pay, are they paying you yet? I, I took hundred and forty quid off from last month. Fucking hell! Have they, have they sent you some gifts yet? They usually send out. They're quite gifty, aren't they? TikTok. I've not had any gifts, but I've had. Oh, you mean like the viewers? Yeah, no, no. I mean, um, right. I'm on about TikTok. TikTok usually send you like hampers and stuff of like just just shit, basically. But they you, they usually recognise you for your views and stuff. No, I've not done anything like that. I just get paid for it. Fucking hell! Look at that's awesome, Mickey. We need to switch up on our TikTok. I think. <laughs> I know. He's on TikTok. Yep. Yeah, no one watches. <laughs> no one, what? Yeah, it's about two hundred views. That's it. But, right, yeah. that's it. Now we're we're getting on that. That's going to be our new venture. Yeah, but we need to do. Got to. You got to. That's TikTok. That's <laughs> yeah. It. Get all three of us on there. We'll just fuck around. I'll I'll, I'll try and get the viewers in with the dad. <laughs> Yeah, we'll man, just, so... yeah, we'll just go and scoff some kebabs somewhere. Yeah, man. maybe we'll, yeah, maybe we'll just sneak a couple of kebabs in no, Buckingham Palace and I've go fucking... and sit somewhere. I've got it. We need to hook up on a Friday, jump in the same car, travel to different parts of the country. So we need to do one in Wales, one in Scotland, one in Ireland, one in fucking, and and we all go and just get a kebab and, and fucking rate the kebabs, mate. <laughs> yeah. I should, you can go anywhere. You can start local and build up to that. But what you could do is you could we could scoot around in a car and try all kebabs. Sure. Yeah, yeah, the better. Kebab tour. It's kebab tour, man. Twenty twenty one. Fucking. Love that'd it. be yeah. That'd be um. That'd be a good idea actually. We've said we've said about doing some stuff like that, like you know, getting out and about with it, and just maybe doing a bit of you know. Our own version of a carpool, of, you know, eating kebabs on the go and fucking doing a tour of it. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny like, as shit. Yeah, do your own grand tour. It'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> the grand tour I, of kebabs. Do you, know, do you know what's weird? Is every time I work with Mickey or every time I see Mickey, I always have given him these fucking ideas. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> fucking get right Just make it. it. Yeah, make a mental note of these ideas. Just like, and then the checks will start coming. <laughs> oh, no. That's it. Yeah, but man. no, it's been it's been good, mate. It's been good. Yeah. No, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on the show. Ah, right. I was going to go into like more detail than that, but I thought, mm, you know, I don't know. But I was going yeah, because was... when I was younger, I went through a lot of shit. Like it wasn't just like the fucking violence and stuff. I went through a lot of physical abuse in care homes and all that sort of mad shit. But you know, I quite happily come on and talk again about that. Sometime. Yeah, we'll get you on again. <laughs> well, yeah, we're gonna say we're gonna do. Because we're going to try and come up with a few agendas of what we're going to talk about. And like I said, it can't all just be, you know, all be fun and games. We're going to talk yeah. about some serious stuff. And I think what we're going to do is put a bunch of categories together in one and, and then start talking about some of the serious stuff as well. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll call it like a late night podcast. So it's, yeah, not, as, not. it's not as, you know, as, as nice. I mean, obviously, we talk about whatever we want, but, but the thing is, sometimes... Is you won't lose your viewers if you put it during the day because you can just put a parental advisory on it and you're good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. All so, right. Awesome. Quality. Episode 18 finished. Thank what? you, Ryan. What? What? Awesome. You're welcome. So um, um, awesome. what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a live when I go to Shetland. I'm, I, I think I arrive on Shetland on the 13th. I travel up on the 12th. So okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do a live from the middle of the North Sea. So when the boat... Fair enough. When the boat is fucking... When the boat's like travelling up in the open sea, I'm going to try and go live from the middle of the ocean. Oh, and, wow. I'll have to watch uh, that. Um, That'd be awesome. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll get you on as a guest. I'll do one of those ones where you can jump in and, and fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll just catch some shit in the middle of the North Sea. I'll <laughs> <laughs> be fucking quality. Good quality. Yeah, man. So, guys, thank you very much for watching and listening wherever you are. Episode 18. Yeah, smashed. Finished. Done. We'll see you guys later. Take thank you easy. so much. See you in a bit. Take it easy. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.